everybody and welcome back to my podcast, Esme's Country Life. Um, I have had, I feel like I say this like most podcast episodes, but this week has been a busy week. I have not only been up and down the country, I've been across the country and back again. I think it's safe to say I've done over a thousand miles, which sounds disgusting to say when I think about how many hours I've probably spent in the car. Good thing I'm a good sleeper when it comes to being in the car. Obviously, I was not driving. Uh, but anyway, before we begin, I just want to say a huge thank you to the sponsor of the podcast, Red Post. Red Post is an equestrian and country store based in the UK, but they also ship all over the world um, with, you know, show season ahead of us. Um, if you're looking to pick up some bits and bobs for the show season, then be sure to head to redpostquestrian.co.uk. Anyway, into this week... Um, what should I start with? I guess I should probably start with um, filming with the Knights of Middle England in Warwick. So, oh my goodness, that was really good fun. I've actually been filming with them. I don't even know how long I've been filming with them, but we're really good friends with them. And I've filmed lots of sort of challenge Esme videos with them over the years. So what was the first one I did? I think the first one I did was like horseback archery. That was really good fun. I really enjoyed that. Um, we also did some jousting as well. That was very different. Um, when I did that, I had... Um, back I think it was back in 2021 I want to say now um but just holding all the equipment like the shield and the um lance oh my goodness it was very heavy and then um what else have I done with them I did a liberty um sort of trick training one that was really good fun that was magical working with these sort of horses and um asking them to like lie down and kind of follow me as I ran round and all that kind of fun stuff and then um I also did a side saddle one as well and that was really difficult I felt feel like side saddle is probably the closest to if you're like a advanced rider feeling like a beginner again because it's totally different muscles you have to use you feel quite like unsettled as well like not as balanced as you normally would so that was also a very good fun one and very different and um so yeah if you want to watch those videos and see what me actually doing it then be sure to head to my channel especially the side saddle one that was funny I actually I think I fell off in that one as well so um but anyway this is the first time I ever did filming with the Knights of Middle England actually at Warwick Castle um so if you're not in the UK you don't know what Warwick Castle is it's basically this huge castle which is very very cool and you can go around it they do um the Knights of Middle England there's actually like I don't know how to describe it it's kind of like an island because there's um like a river that goes all the way around it which is next to the castle and apparently this is actually a really cool fact that I found out when I was filming there is that the same bit where they do all their performances and dress up as knights and that kind of thing and do jousting is the same bit of land where they would have done the jousting back in sort of you know time of the knights many medieval times kind of thing so um that's very cool um but yeah so I went there doing like a we did like a we filmed a day in the life kind of thing of a stunt rider there or a trick rider there and um we started off very early in the morning um loading all the horses out of the horse box and we were walking them across you know the grounds of this castle which is absolutely breathtaking so stunning there over a little bridge onto the sort of island I guess and um, there's like a little arena there they also have this thing that they let off every morning to test it but they actually properly kind of like let it off um, in the afternoon for you know people to watch and stuff and it's called a I'm really bad at pronouncing it so apologies if I say this completely wrong but I think it's called a trebuchet but everyone just calls it the treb and basically if you could imagine the like a huge slingshot that's kind of what it's like I guess um so it's this kind of metal contraption that goes all the way back and then they let it fire and there's this kind of almost like a cannonball with a bit of string attached to it so that was really cool though because um I had like a trick riding lesson in the morning and we had to kind of finish up with that before they let off this thing going that was you know quite loud and you know goes very high up in the air so um we quickly managed to squeeze in like a trick riding lesson for me my first ever time doing trick riding as well and one of the things I feel like I love with the podcast and me talking is I'm probably gonna be able to describe a lot more what it felt like to do it than actually the time I would be able to you know chat about it in the video I feel like if I talk too long in my in my videos sometimes people switch off and get a bit bored but with my podcast that's what you guys are here for you're here to listen to, to me just like chatting on so I can tell you a little bit more about what it was like for you know my first time doing trick riding 
I think the closest thing I could say, like disciplines, if you've done these things before, it's a bit like vaulting. And then it's a bit kind of like, I was going to say mounted games, but I guess I used to do vaulting in mounted games where you kind of like run along with, on, well, you run along on the horse and then you jump off and then you jump back on again. But um, it's kind of like doing vaulting, but a little bit more wild west I, I don't know if that's a good way to describe it vaulting i'd say it's more like you have to be a gymnast you don't really have to be a horse rider but with trick riding you definitely have to have some sort of riding knowledge to get the hang of it so um also with vaulting you you're you know you're on this huge horse and it's quite big there's a lot more to hold on to but with trick riding i was actually to be fair the horse that was on it was really weird because he was probably about joey size like 16 hands ish 16 one but because he was um a cob he looked really compact so when you looked at him from like some distance away he probably only looked about 15 hands when you got up close well actually this is quite a big horse um so anyway the horse is called chief he was lovely he was a I want to say like a black or a very dark bay cob. I want to say black with like a white um, stripe. And he was so cute and looked after me really well. Um, But yeah, with with vaulting, there's normally somebody in the middle on a long piece of string lunging you. So they kind of have control of the horse or they're the ones that are asking the horse to move forward or stop or that kind of thing. With trick riding, a lot of the time, you're either doing it down like a... um, a straight of like an an arena so your horse is just moving forward you're going in a straight line or you're doing it in a circle and then your horse just knows to go you know round the circle so it's not like you're just doing it in the wild kind of thing um but because obviously it was my first time luckily I was being lunged um so you know I had a I had a little helping hand I also had a really cool instructor called James who was incredible taught me so well and um So let's get into, you know, what I was actually doing on this horse. So the first one I had to do, um, also on a trick riding saddle, quite different to like a normal English saddle. There are lots of different straps to make sure that the saddle's nice and secure, especially when you're like hanging off. Um, They also have a special strap um, for the stirrups as well, if you do do like a hanging off one, which is actually quite similar to horse ball as well when I tried that. Um, So yeah, I guess it's a bit similar to horse ball in that sense. But, um, and then also there's like a really big, um pommel kind of i don't know i don't know how to like handle i guess that you can hold on to a bit similar to a western saddle and then there's a handle at the back as well so um the first the first actually exercise i did i found the most difficult i think i actually fell off as well i can't remember if that was in trot or canter i say i fell off i dismounted with style because i thought you know what instead of me just like wobbling 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 oh and she's gone i thought you know what i'm just gonna jump off (laughs) <laughs> that was like my natural instinct so I was like like a little cat like landing on my feet I was like I'm just gonna jump off this th- that'll be easier kind of thing um but yeah the first one I kind of had to hold on to the pommel at the front and then I kind of had to lift my l- okay if I- I'm gonna do it with my right leg going over to the left so to lift my right leg up put it over my hands take off one hand hold on and then put my leg over and then try and put my hand back again so that um so that one I don't know it was like putting both my legs onto one side and then moving back and then putting both my legs onto the other side which I don't know why but I found it I found that one the most difficult to be fair when James said don't lean forward I know you want to kind of lean forward and hunch into a little ball don't do that lean back sit really tall use your kind of use your abs use your tummy muscles and actually that helped a lot like quite a lot when I realized actually that's how I balance because basically the only way I was kind of balancing was because normally when you're on a horse you kind of wrap your legs around them my legs were not wrapped around this horse the only thing that was keeping me there was my bum cheeks and my hands (laughs) that sounded a bit weird but anyway um so yeah that one I found the most difficult I think it was in trot actually because um chief was quite a bouncy horse so I was kind of like bouncing a little bit all over the place um but then I did some other ones I did one where you basically stand and wrap your leg around the stirrup so you're basically just standing on one side of the horse that was really good fun did that in canter as well um but the one that was the most spectacular which I think I did like a little reel of which was cool was the one where I basically was hanging upside down and I had loads of my friends and things message me or when I showed them the video being like oh my gosh Esme you are wild what 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 why why have you done that you are so brave how like that kind of thing 
But actually, that one I found the easiest or one of the easiest ones because when you're lying down, even though you are upside down, you have quite a lot of points of contact. Like I had both my hands on the pommel and the cantle, that kind of thing, or, or the handles. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know if I'm calling it the right thing, but um, I had both my hands on the handles. I had like my whole like back and bum and everything like lying across chief so i actually felt i felt quite comfy in that i could lie upside down like a bat all day kind of thing so um i actually that one i thought you know what because i was talking to james about this he was like look normally i don't let people uh, i don't know if he was just saying this but he was saying normally i don't let people canter in this position on their first ever trick riding lesson but because you've done pretty well you can give it a go if you want and he was like do you want to do it in trot first or do you want to do it in canter and i thought you know what trot is so bouncy I think I'm because I um when when you do the kind of movements you do have to do it really quick it's one of those things where you kind of it kind of has to become muscle memory if you do it too slow or halfway through you stop to think or that kind of thing it makes it a lot more difficult because if you stop halfway through it's often when you're most unbalanced you kind of have to do the trick really quickly Um, well that's what I found was easiest anyway so I was really confident doing it in halt doing it in walk and then I thought you know what Trot's just going to be too bouncy. Let's do it in canter. Canter's only a little bit faster. It's kind of one of those things where it's like mind over matter. You just had to do it. You just had to go full in. You couldn't, you know, do anything half-assed. You had to fully go for it. So anyway, managed to do it. And I was like, oh my goodness, I am a professional. No, not really. But it was such an adrenaline rush. So much fun. If you ever get the chance to do trick riding, would recommend. I think the Knights of Middle England actually do trick riding lessons. So um, would definitely recommend them if you're looking to do that. Um, but yeah, that was honestly so, so cool. I'd love to do that again with them sometime, maybe next time and back up. But that was also a very like quick lesson again because the treb was about to go off. We were like, okay, we need to get this horse like back to the stables and everything before this thing comes flying at us because it actually like the um i don't want to call it a cannonball because it doesn't like fire but the big bowling ball thing that flies it actually like flies over the arena that they have um so anyway once we'd done that untacked chief got them all chilled um it was then time to get the horses ready for the actual show so they do two performances at warwick castle every single day including Sundays and they're going to be doing that until the 3rd of September I believe so if you're in the area or fancy a day out and want to go to Warwick Castle and cheer them on and go and see it you can go and do that so would recommend the show is actually really good it's half an hour long but it's one of those things where once it's finished you're like that was not half an hour because there's just so much that goes on it's so entertaining it it feels like it goes so so quickly um but anyway yeah the show is the war of the roses um i feel like i'm gonna be like history as me here um obviously i won't tell the whole story because it is you know quite long and um i don't know how much many of the facts i managed to retain i don't want to say anything inaccurate so go and watch it yourself but um basically back in you know I don't, I don't even know when it was, but a long, long time ago when Warwick Castle was kind of like a big old thing. It was thrive, thriving. It was in its, you know, golden era, I guess. <laughs> so basically, there are two different houses, the House of Yorkshire and the House of Lancaster. And um, they were basically fighting over the crown. And that's kind of what the whole story is about. So it was really cool because there were quite a lot of kids there from schools and things. So they were kind of going there as a history lesson, but it was also just a really incredible thing to watch. So they had um, lots of actors as well. And obviously, all of the horses, they had some, they literally had like so many different like disciplines all in one show. And even if you're not a horse person or even if you're not like a history person it was just so spectacular to watch like they had fire they had um confetti i think right at the end that was pretty cool they had um smoke and pyros and all this kind of stuff so it was incredible um and also the horses are really really cool and a lot of the horses they have really interesting stories so one of my favorite horses there is actually called sausage and the reason why she's called sausage is because she was originally on a meat truck and then obviously they bought her took her in trained her up and now she is an incredible sort of stunt horse like she does all these cool things and if you I would never have thought that she would have been you know a horse that was going to the meat market so it's quite sad to think like what her life would have been like if they hadn't have taken her in or not her life but um, they also have lots of other horses from literally all their horses are different breeds different from different disciplines or different walks of life um they have one horse or one pony that was an ex-polo pony he just started 
to be not as fast as the others. So um, he had like a a career change, I guess. There was also a horse from the Household Cavalry that um, was a trumpeter horse, I think, for about six years. And then he just wouldn't stand still and he was due a career change as well. So he joined the Knights of Middle England as well. And oh my goodness, I feel like this trumpeter horse was probably um, one of our favourites as well because, um, I mean, you guys know, I've got a soft spot for a grey gelding, but it wasn't because he was grey or gelding. It's because he was absolutely huge. He was like the biggest cuddliest I think they called him like the big teddy bear is like his nickname but he was the biggest cuddliest boy and he just wanted cuddles and he was just like a big gentle giant you know those sort of horses that have like a really big head and you just want to wrap your arms around them and give them a hug and that kind of thing he was one of those horses so he was really cool as well um but yeah in the show they did so many cool things they did like night games I guess you could call it so um a bit like sort of mounted games but they it was a bit more extreme like for example um they did one where they kind of had like a sword and it had to go through these hoops but the hoops were on fire and things like that so um i don't want to give too many spoilers but it was a really really cool show and yeah seeing the jousting as well that was awesome and then they did like a um some trick riding at the end too and i thought that was probably my i I don't know like there was so much of it that was awesome but i'd probably say as like a rider i felt like watching the trick riding at the end was probably my favorite just because I could see how difficult it was and the trust that they must have with these horses. And also to do it in front of a crowd with all this loud music, that kind of thing. And they had like performers doing like fighting with swords and that kind of thing. So these horses were very, very well behaved, very well trained and were just just awesome really. So um, that was pretty much my day with the Knights of Middle England. Um, So yeah, actually when this podcast is out, because this goes out at the weekend, um, hopefully the video that I'm doing for that for my sort of challenge Esme where I try trick riding and also showing the behind the scenes of their sort of day in the life, that should be out already. So after you've listened to this podcast, I hate to be that YouTuber that's like, go and watch my videos, but if you'd like to watch it and see actually me doing all the cool things, then would definitely recommend. Um, but anyway, now on to the other sort of busy, exciting thing that I've done this week. And that was actually, is I, I, I actually like to film my podcasts like kind of at the beginning of the second week, if that makes sense. So I'm talking about what last week was. It's currently Monday. Um, but yeah, back on, actually not even that long ago, I say back, um, back on uh, Saturday, actually, I went to Gloucestershire to Hartbury University for for the Riding for the Disabled National Championships. Now, it was so, so lovely to be back. Last time I went or I was invited was back in 2019, I feel like. So, obviously, pandemic years, that kind of thing. It's been a bit tricky to get back. But, um, no, it was so awesome to be back. So, yeah, four years. I feel like those four years have flown by. I feel like sometimes 2019 is one of those years where it feels like yesterday, but also so long ago as well. Like, it still kind of feels like last year. But, anyway... um, So I had a lovely time there. I feel like the RDA Nationals is a little bit like, I don't know how to describe it. Maybe it's kind of like, I always feel like it's kind of like a wedding that you kind of get invited to, but you don't really know many people there. But everyone knows everyone, like a big family wedding. Everyone kind of goes each year and meets up and be like, oh yeah, I remember you from last year. And like friends like coming together. And it's just, I don't know how to describe it. I feel like a lot of, equestrian competitions you go to there's a lot of rivalry there's a lot of I don't know I don't know how to describe it it feels like but the RDA Nationals it's just such a lovely place everyone's supporting everyone everyone's cheering everyone on and it's just so lovely they also have one of my favorite competitions that they have there is called the Countryside Challenge which I cannot lie if I did that challenge I would probably be on the floor because these ponies must be so brave because the Countryside Challenge basically if you can imagine it's kind of like a um basically like a horsey obstacle course but they have loads of like really spooky looking things there like there's like a, I think it was like a little old-fashioned lawnmower I don't know why that came to my head but um basically lots of like countryside things so there was like a scarecrow um right at the end one of my favorite ones is that they have to post like a letter in a letterbox and um, there's also one where there's like an apple tree and you pick an apple off the apple tree and then you have to like put it in a bucket and that kind of thing but yeah can you imagine if I did that on Casper Casper would be like oh no 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 like even just going in between the white dressage boards there's like a little kind of like snake that you have to like go through Casper would take one look at that scarecrow and be like no thank you I'm not going near that he'd probably walk into the arena and be like 
turn back draw it back out he'd do a 180 he'd be like this this is too spooky for me <laughs> kind of thing so um that's always really good fun to watch um then of course in the sort of main big arena if any of you guys have seen Hartbury, that it's there's this massive outdoor arena and i think there's like a lot of the dressage kind of goes on there um they have lots of different things obviously i wasn't there for the whole time i was only there on the saturday but i'm pretty sure this year they were saying that this was one of the first years where they had driving so that's really cool um i think they have jumping as well and they have some like showing classes where you know everyone gets dressed up in their showing stuff um but no it was really cool and also it was really lovely to go to all the stables as well and um, meet a lot of the horses oh my goodness there were so many cobs cobs are probably one of my favorite breeds i'm actually surprised that i don't own a cob yet before we got duke and we me and my family were saying that we really wanted to rehome a horse from world horse welfare for ages we had our heart set on like a mini uh, i was gonna say like a mini cob i don't know if mini cob is actually like a breed but i remember one of the times i went there they had probably about like 13 14 um mini cobs now when i tell you these cobs were probably about 11 hands I want to say but you know I wouldn't train Duke for the world and he was definitely like it sounds cheesy but he Duke is definitely like was kind of for us he just came over to us and loved us and we were like yep he's chosen us <laughs> it sounds so cliche um but anyway yeah there were loads of cobs there and oh, I just love it when cobs have little fluffy feathers and like a big moustache I feel like they would be very difficult to care for in the winter over where we are because we're on clay and the fields get so muddy but anyway there were lots of really cute cobs um chatted to those people also in the stables they always like properly decorate it which is awesome like they have um loads of um bunting with the names of like their rda and um i just think it's, it's just such a lovely kind of it's just such a lovely atmosphere um also i met a lovely lady called millie millie boo and um she came all the way from scotland and she was competing at a national a national championships on a horse that she had never ridden before that weekend oh my gosh if you ask me oh yeah go the other side of the uk and ride a horse that you've never ridden before in a national championships i'll be like girl who do you think i am like <laughs> i wouldn't I don't think i would be that brave um but anyway so i had a little chat to her and um talked about her story and she actually moved up a level she's 16 so this was her first year also competing um with adults now she was competing i think yesterday i believe on the sunday um she her, there were her sort of main big classes she was doing the dressage and also the dressage to music now she won't mind me saying because i did interview her and have a really good chat to her and we actually got along really really well but um she has cerebral palsy and also is deaf so it was actually really interesting hearing about how um, she kind of trains and um, also especially with the dressage to music because she can't hear it as well she was really having to like feel the vibrations and she was saying how um, the music that she was picking she had to be really specific with it so for the bits maybe where she's going slower um, the music would be a bit quieter and then it was maybe something a bit more upbeat when she was going faster to make sure that she was in time to the music so she was honestly so lovely and I actually spent quite a lot of the day with her I sat next to her and her dad at prize giving as well which was um really cool because i felt very honored to give out a lot of the prizes at the prize giving um in the afternoon too but oh my goodness i felt so bad because the weather there was awful like the beginning it was again it was one of those kind of things where it was kind of glorious sunshine for five minutes and then it would pelt it down with rain and there'll be glorious sunshine and then it would be like really 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 windy so there was one bit where i think there was pr proper like thunder and lightning and stuff so all the horses had to go into the stables we all went into like the main big arena and had to wait a few hours and then finally everyone could go out and compete again and it was fine i think some of the classes did go on quite late like she was saying her countryside challenge probably wasn't in until like seven half seven i believe so that was quite a late one but um yeah i just want to say well done to everybody who competed at the rda nationals and it was lovely to see all of you there honestly such a such a good show if you ever get the opportunity to go like i'm pretty sure you can just go as a spectator it is really good fun and also if any of you guys are um in the uk i'm pretty sure they do have rda in different countries as well but if you guys have any spare time this summer i would really really recommend um um going to a local rda group and asking to volunteer they're always looking for more volunteers especially younger people so please go and do it also if you're doing your young equestrian leaders award you can also um like 
get points towards that. That's something that I would really recommend doing. I did it back when I was a teenager over the summer holidays. And it's a really good thing where um, you go out and you volunteer and you help local riding schools or local RDA groups or um, basically places that need more young people more volunteers and um you get little points towards um getting like a little badge so i think i, I think i got i did my bronze and i did my silver didn't end up doing my gold in the end um but then that helps that's also gives you points and it's just something lovely to say and something to do so would recommend but yeah please l- look up your local rda group and volunteer if you can if you have some free time not even in the summer if you can do it all, all the year round go for it um, but anyway yeah that was the RDA Nationals that was really really good fun and I felt very honoured to be invited now after that super busy week I actually have about 10 days where I'm at home where I'm just you know working at home with the horses that kind of thing which probably doesn't sound like that much but to me it feels like a long time so I actually lots have lots of cool videos that I'm planning on filming soon because also my brother Max is back from university you guys always enjoy when I do some filming with him which is always funny so I think we're going to try and do a car versus horse that could be really cool I'm going to do a 24 hour challenge in my horse horse box to celebrate one years of having my Aquito horse box that's really cool um what else what else have I got planned I really want to do another food battle so many of you have asked for a new food battle and I think it would be really good fun if I maybe got Max as one as one of the competitors so I've got some good ideas for that um also I have a lot of shows coming on especially like this August because I'm Is it August that I'm going to the World Horse Welfare one? Yeah. So literally the whole of August is very busy. So I'm going up to World Horse Welfare in Scotland because I can't believe I have not done a meet and greet in Scotland yet. How wild is that? So I'm going up to Scotland. Really looking forward to that at the World Horse Welfare Rehoming Centre. I'm actually riding... Tell you what... uh, you know what I was saying earlier just just remembered I'm actually going to be riding a horse that I've never ridden before I don't know how much like at least I won't be competing at national championships um but I am doing like a little demo on this horse or this pony um but I don't know how much I'll be doing I might just be walking and trotting maybe I'll have a little canter you never know we'll see how it goes um so that's really cool I'm also going to the um Dublin horse show so that's really good fun. And then I'm going literally from the Dublin Hall show to the Longines Global Champions Tour in London. Not even going home in between, literally flying back from Dublin, going up to London, that kind of thing. So that will be a very busy week. And then a week after that, I have a meet and greets at Red Post. So there we go. That's my little schedule if you're wondering what I'm going to be up to over the next month, I guess. Um, but anyway, thank you so much, everybody, for listening to today's podcast. I really hope you enjoyed it. Thank you so much again to Red Post for sponsoring the podcast. Really do appreciate it. And I'll see you all next time. Bye.